There's been a lot of excitement around the potential for artificial intelligence from applications to the workplace to changes in our daily lives. But according to our future guest today, all that computing power is going to require a lot of energy. Joining us now to discuss Kevin Hebner, Global Investment Strategist with TD Epic. Kevin, great to see you again. Hey, Greg. So this is interesting, and this is a theme that has been emerging for all the excitement and the conversations around AI and what it could do for us. You know, there's, there's starting to be a realization out there that electricity demand is going to uh, peak as well. It's been stagnant for a while. This could be a big change. It is a big change. So electricity demand in Canada and the United States was flat from 2007 until 2022. And now we're seeing an increase in electricity demand, quite, quite significant. And there's three drivers for that. One is um, AI, in particular, the number of data centers required. We're seeing, uh, for example, Microsoft set up a new data center uh, every three days. They're bigger, they need cooling. Uh, a second driver has been EVs, um, le le electric vehicles, and the electrification of everything. And then the third driver is home sharing. And we are actually seeing uh, home sharing occur, particularly of electronic facilities for semiconductors. You're mentioning NVIDIA before uh, related to that. So um, increased demand for electricity. It, this is, I think all three parts of this trend are real and, and quite a departure from what we saw the previous 15 years. All right, so we have some competing interests there as well, right? Electric vehicles, onshoring manufacturing is power hungry and AI is gonna be power yes. hungry. Is, is there yeah. uh, a threat here to the AI development? Could we actually slow down the pace of AI progress just based on energy demand? I, I think that that is a risk. There, and you can think of AI as a stool with four pillars. One, one is algos and the, the, the models behind AI. Um, and there's a lot of developments going there. A second is data. And there are concerns about data, particularly the quality of text data, but we're moving into images, video, sound, and so forth. So data part continues. Compute, you're mentioning the video, that's a critical part of the development of AI. And, and we've known about those three for quite a while. The new one this year is really uh, electricity. Um, data centers are, um, they're, they're very hungry caterpillars, a lot of their electricity. And this is surprised, um, Really, I think the whole energy infrastructure chain over the last six months, um, I don't think that's something people were uh, prepared for. Now, obviously, over the past decade, we've become very aware of climate issues. And, yes. you know, there's been a huge effort by governments, by corporations to try to address yeah. those climate issues. So you yeah. start thinking about artificial intelligence being so hungry for energy, so hungry for yeah. resources. Uh, is climate change yeah. actually being thought of a, not, as not a positive? I, I think... Um, in the short term, I think what's happening with AI and data centers is going to be a bit of a negative. We have, for the last 15 years or so, been reducing CO2 emissions in most of the developed world. And that will continue, but maybe at a slightly decreased pace with the increased demands from AI and so forth. And, and immediately, if we need more electricity, the easiest way to generate it is through natural gas. And that doesn't require much thought. The second way would be solar and wind, but there's intermittency problems, which are big issues for data centers until we get battery technology to store electricity from two to four hours to two to three days. That's going to continue to be uh, an issue. People talk a lot about nuclear, but that's not going to be part of the solution probably for the next decade. Beyond the next decade, I think it's very promising, but it's a technology that we've ignored for quite a long time. Um, so that means at least in the short term, the easiest thing to do is natural gas. And unfortunately, that does mean somewhat increased CO2 emissions and the dangers that poses for uh, climate change. The, I guess the one thing I would say about this, though, is the, um, the big hyperscalers, the big tech companies, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, and so on, they're very serious about their environmental commit commitments. They want to be net zero. This is part of the evaluation and remuneration of all top executives of these companies. So they're do what they can do. And we've seen some very big deals already from Amazon, um, from Microsoft to get um, clean energy driving the data centers. So I think short term, it's an issue, but it's something that the, the tech sector is very serious about, but, but that will take some time to come through. 
And so it'll be interesting to see how that evolves. At the same time, though, we do know that if we're going to be using this much more energy, you still got a transporter, right? And the infrastructure yep. we know in North America yep. is old and some challenges there to updating it. Like, what, so what's the challenge there? Why don't we just update it? And, and I think to some extent, this reflects the hollowing out of capabilities to make stuff in North America that we've seen since 1990. And, and th this is across the manufacturing spectrum. But for example, with um, e electricity, so we need the data centers, the cooling systems, the transformers, we need to build out the grid. Um, there's a lot of components to that. There's specialized steel. There's only one company in the United States that makes that specialized steel. And as we've ignored the manufacturing capabilities for so much and made ourselves reliant on overseas economies, in many cases, that means China, I think there's a realization, whether it's semiconductors, it's energy, um, electricity, and the infrastructure for electricity, that we do need to home shore that and develop it. And, and, and this is something which has caught a lot of people uh, by surprise. And so I do think it's going to take um, and ultimately, this is where the world of bits, so if we think about AI meets the world of atoms, the world of bits can move very quickly. The world of atoms building out the energy infrastructure, um, it, it can take a long time, certainly five to 10 years. Yeah, we're just showing the audience a graphic that you provided for us in terms of the uh, average age of infrastructure and has definitely gone up dramatically in the past little while. So it sounds like we're talking about risks here, Kevin. Risks to the AI trend, energy being yeah. at the center of it. I mean, how could some of this play out? Yeah, so one risk is that we don't have the energy to feed the data centers, and that slows down the progress of AI. And this is bad in the sense that AI holds a lot of promise for sectors like education, healthcare, uh, and beyond. And net-net and is definitely good for, for society. So that, that is, that is a, a, a risk. Maybe it's not even a risk. Maybe that's a, a likelihood. Um, an alternative risk is we, we are in the midst of this AI boom, CapEx boom, the three big hyperscalers uh, promised to invest $150 billion this year. This is a crazy amount of money. And there is a chance that we're replaying the 1990s, that the amount of investment is unsustainable, and there will be a pullback. And so in that sense, that if we do increase the electricity we're, we're generating and transmitting um, too quickly, we could overshoot. I think five, 10 years from now, there definitely will be a demand. But I think there are somewhat two-sided risks here, but the balance of probabilities definitely lies in that we won't have the capabilities and this will slow down the progress of AI. We put all of this together, Kevin. What's the implications for investors? I think it's pretty clear that the first round of all this uh, from an investment point of view has been about the semis. Uh, what, what do we think going forward? Yeah, so beyond that, if you look at the, the sectors within the, the S&P 500, the number three performing sector this year is actually utilities. Uh, we have tech, we have commercial services, that includes a number of the, the big hyperscaler names, but number three is utilities. So this sector does look interesting, uh, more so than it has the last couple, couple of years. Um, secondly, there are a lot of these energy infrastructure names. In fact, if you look at the, the top 10 performers within the S&P year to date, four of those 10 are energy infrastructure names. You know, NVIDIA, everybody likes to mention, but even beyond NVIDIA, there's a number of com companies that aren't household names that look very interesting given this theme. And then I think the, the third um, interesting idea for investors is we're going to need a lot of real investment in energy infrastructure and broadly in infrastructure. And so these are our real assets, the real funds. Um, and um, there's, there's a lot of interest in this, the government won't be able to fund this because governments both in Canada, the United States and other places, they're pretty cash strapped. So ultimately will be investors funding this. And I think that's that's an opportunity often for say 8% returns, pretty stable and a nice pickup on what you're getting from government bonds.